12 in the morning. So I'm going to move on to this. This is going to be the last topic, incidentally. I was going to speak about Michael B. Jordan. He is directing Creed 3. Uh, he's going to be starring in it too. Tessa Thompson revealed that. I'm very, very happy about that. This is a natural development for Michael B. Jordan. This guy's a, a real tour de force. There's nothing he can't do. Um, he, he, not only has he been voted, I think I think he was voted the, the sexiest man of 2019. Tessa Thompson spoke about that too. She's going to give him shit. Not only does he get that, you get an amazing physique. This guy, he's charismatic as hell. Wim, the, the women are just dripping off him. But he's a great actor, uh, and he's proven it time and again. He's a great actor, and uh, he's produces, and now he's directing, and it's a natural con- uh, sort of arc for that character, for that story. We've seen it with Sly Stallone. Uh, he stepped into the director's seat, he produced, he wrote, and it only went great places for Sly and the, the character of Rocky, so I'm absolutely certain Creed will be great. Again, because I've loved the first two movies, and I'm absolutely certain Michael B. Jordan will hit the ball out of the park as the director, actor, double duty, sort of thing. So, looking forward to that, man. But look, getting back onto topic, this is the final topic of the show. It's Rogue Squadron. It's all about Patty Jenkins and four things coming in from Cinema Blend that they hope will breathe life or bring life into the Star Wars movie universe. Don't agree with all the things. Uh, first things first. Um, Purely just the actual setting, because they, they speak about the, the budding New Republic, uh, as I'll get into in a moment, and what they want to see from that. I, I'd rather this be set in the, the, the period between the sequel trilogy and perhaps, well, that's the New Republic, John, you're talking shite, so I don't disagree. Just didn't know everything I've just said there. A diverse cast of pilots, yeah, we all want to see that. I've said it before, um, I don't like forced diversity, I don't like forced representation just for the sake of it, because you can see through agendas. And you, you can see that it's just been forced, like what we got in the sequel trilogy, giving John B. Yeager a leading role, then batting him to the side for the white female. Giving Oscar Isaac a decent character, then batting him aside for something else. When you force diversity, it's very, very obvious. But when it's unnatural, organic diversity, nothing wrong with that, man. All for it. I've says time and time again, I want to see the full lexicon of ethnicities and just the melting pot of cultural melting pot of the world today. There's many different people out there of different creeds, colours, religion, everything. And they deserve to be represented on the screen as much as I do as a white male. So absolutely on board for a diverse cast of pilots, but make it so that it's a, a living, breathing part of the story. Make it so that it's something that's it's not just put in there and it's forced. Make it something that all these people that's something I loved about Band of Brothers. We get all of these guys, they had a common brotherhood by the end. At the start, they were all splintered and different people, religions, and they were giving each other shit. By the end, they were absolute brothers and tightly knit. That's what I want to see with this. I want to see boots in the ground storytelling. I want to see warfare, brotherhood, camaraderie. That's the th- one thing I get excited about when I heard about this. Looking in to the sort of perspective of a pilot in this galaxy, what it's like, the, the, I keep saying it, camaraderie, the, the close-knit sort of close quarters, relationships, do something with that diversity, you can do it, you can make it a part of the story and yeah, not just tacked on for tacked on sakes if you'd like, but look, next one, the early days of the New Republic, I want to see this as well, we've seen this explored in multiple, multiple novels and uh, yeah, we've seen it in the Leia novel, we've seen it in various other novels that, that just explore the power, vacuum, the dynamic, how things sort of thrived and turned into this New Republic, bickering and naysayers and dissent identities of your father and Leia's case being revealed and how that changed things for her political career. I want to see it. I want to see the early days of this new republic. How things happened. How we got a splinter cell of empire turning into the First Order. I want to see it and I want to see how that affects the relationships and the mentality of these pilots. I just, just, oh, everything should be framed through the boots in the ground brotherhood side of story. I want this to be banned on the brothers. Ba- banned on the brothers. Wow. It's getting late. I want this to be framed from a band of brothers, Star Wars type thing. That's what I want. Whether I get it, whether parties get that in mind, is another thing entirely. Um, a Rogue One connection. What they're really saying here is, is that it, it was kind of hinted after Rogue One. They, they wrote it in the canon, if you'd like. That the Rogue Squadron name, that this sort of squadron of pilots, they got the name from Rogue One, the heroes of Rogue One, who sacrificed themselves to save the galaxy, to destroy the first... Death Star, they want to see that connection actually not just written into a comic book but written into the actual film canon as well and look, I can't disagree with it, I love Rogue One it's my favourite Star Wars movie from Disney to this day, great performance from Felicity Jones, the likes of Diego Luna, the likes of uh, your man Riz Ahmed uh, Alan Tudyk as well, amazing, amazing movie I love it, 
I really do, and it's mostly down to Tony Gilroy coming in and saving the day. Gareth Edwards done okay, but he wanted it to be a everyone survives type setup. That shit doesn't work. I'm absolutely all for a connection to that story. And then finally, awesome X Wing space battles. Who doesn't want that, man? When you get told that you're getting a, a, a Rogue Squadron movie, First thing that came to my mind, as I did say, brotherhood, close-knit relationship, very different people from different backgrounds coming together, having a commonality of cause and wanting to become tight-knit. But the second thing that comes to mind is amazing space battles. The best things about Star Wars, for me, lightsaber battles and space battles. That's it. Um, simplistic story. Um, it's just a space opera with the sort of common archetypal characters, the, the farm boy, the princess, the roguish smuggler, the sort of the rogue who turns good kings and queens all this shit sort of empires evil fucking uh, oops I've sworn <laughs> shit evil empires <laughs> I, I let the guards slip every now and again but yeah evil effing empires there you go and uh, y you put that to the side that's not so important what's important is <laughs> it's getting late guys <laughs> what's important is the big bombastic space battles the lightsaber battles and I want to see big space battles taking place in this movie this is what it's all about it's a space movie with commonality and brotherhood and rogue squadrons and x-wings and i've done it again haven't I? i've done it again it's no x-wings it is x-wings x-wings and tie fighters there you go i want to see that man and i'm excited for this movie and i hope patty jenkins can actually keep the movie because i've seen other channels saying on the internet today that there's a possibility she might not get the movie now because that sort of underperforming nature of Wonder Woman 1984 is rearing its ugly head and it's a possibility she might lose it. I hope she doesn't. I don't mind Patty as a director. Um, her writing's perhaps, perhaps not amazing at all times but I'm looking forward to seeing what she gives us and uh, look it's going to be a, a historic moment. A female director and I know she hates that getting said about her because I read that today as well but a female director stepping into the world of Star Wars for the first time ever so look yeah, I'm going to switch off now. The, the show's done. I'm over. I'm swearing at the end, my God.